welcome to Driver of Destiny. This video is for the Type 1 Diabetes community and I am going to be taking you through the start to finish of wearing the Omnipod. I am on an Omnipod Dash insulin pump and I have been a proud Omnipod user since a conference I attended some years ago changed my mind and urged me to take the plunge into an insulin pump regimen from multiple daily injections. I have had type 1 diabetes from the age of 10 and I had briefly been on another tube insulin pump more than a decade ago. The manufacturer of that pump is no longer in business. I hadn't had a very desirable experience with that. So that was one of the reasons that I had been on multiple daily injections for years and I was very particular that I wanted to go on a tubeless insulin pump so the army part fit the bullet to the hill. So for those of you guys who have been recently diagnosed or those of you who are jumping from the multiple daily injections regimen to an insulin pump regimen and decided to go on an Omnipod. Or for those of you who are young and want to try to do this yourself and figure it out, those of you who are still struggling to wear the Omnipod, you know, I hope this video will be helpful. I am going to keep this video as cheerful and colorful as possible because it also speaks to the life of color and vitality that I have been living. So I want to spread the vibe out there and put forward the message that uh, life does not have to be drab and colorless because of type 1 diabetes. It's absolutely possible to live the life that you want and the Omnipod has made things a whole lot easier. By the way, I'm not openly advertising Omnipod. I'm not, uh, you know, intending to do that. So anything that I'm going to be doing right now is based on my personal experience with the Omnipod as a person living with type 1 diabetes. With that, let's get started. Well, first things first, deactivate the pod, all right? So, this is my uh, PDM. I just go to the pod details here and hit change pod. When I do that, I will automatically get an option to deactivate my previous part. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. Now my part is deactivated and now I'm actually going to be taking off the part. Okay guys, so I am wearing my part on my side. Oh, I can't even remember where it is actually a favorite of. So I think it's on this side. While I'm at it, I should tell you guys about the benefits of neem oil. It's been an absolute godsend to put neem oil or plain coconut oil on any of the old part sites, okay? Uh, it really helps heal the skin and maintain the skin integrity which is particularly helpful for people with you know medical devices like the Omnipod or the Dexcom which I use. I don't know if you guys can see this. Yeah, this is my Dexcom G6. Okay, I'm going to be taking off my pod first. I have deactivated it. Here's where I'm wearing it. Now this is off, now that the pod is off, I'm going to set up the new pod. Okay guys, so I have deactivated my old pod, I've taken that off and now I am going to be setting up the new pod. So can you guys see this? It says no active pod, set up pod. So just uh, click on that, then set up pod. It will tell you to uh, put insulin into the pod. This is my new box. It's a pack of 10. <laughs> so I'm going to be taking my new pod. And it's really very neatly packed, you know. I really like that about this. Okay guys, I'm using a different camera now. So if my audio quality changes, that's why. Uh, just so that you guys can see all this more clearly, alright. So now I am going to be drawing insulin into the new pod. And I am unwrapping this. Those of you guys who have not necessarily taken insulin through syringes might find this process a bit tricky, but you know, it's very intuitive. So 
So this is the needle that has been given. I uncapped this. And you have to determine how much insulin you want, whether it's 150 units, 180 units, whatever it is. I do ensure that uh, I have a little more insulin than I might need just for whatever emergency because I don't want to run out of insulin before my card expires. So I draw this piston out. You can see the graduations here, 100, 150, 200, right? I draw the piston out to 180 units. Can you guys see that? Okay, now this is just air, but this is helpful to do so that you don't end up drawing air from the vials. So again, I'll show you guys what I did was I uncapped the syringe. I drew the piston out to 180 units here because that's how much insulin I want to draw. And then I push this into the vial. Okay. Plunge the piston in. Can you guys see that? That's what I did. And now I draw the piston back out. Okay, so I've come up to 180, all right? Now, I mean, this is not a, a terribly necessary thing to do, but I just, you know, try to tap it on the side a couple of times just to ensure that, you know, there's no, ins can you see? There's a small, like, blob of insulin at the tip of the needle to avoid things like that, you know, so that I can inject this insulin into the pod smoothly. So I just tap it on the side a couple of times, okay? And I have now drawn this insulin to 180. Just to be doubly sure that it's not air, I push the piston out gently and it is insulin that's coming out. And I am going to be injecting this into the pod, okay? So there's a hole here, okay? Which you can see. I'm just gonna put the needle in here, all right? And plunge the piston in. Even though the part kind of shakes a bit, it doesn't matter, okay, because the needle is in the hole. And now, you know, did you hear the part beep twice? We are going in the right direction <laughs> because that's what it typically does. So now I've injected the insulin into the part. I am capping this back and putting it there. All right, now this guys is going to be my trash box <laughs> i also put the vial back in my pouch so all this is out of the way okay so now as i showed you guys before i hit set up pod and now i just have to hit next because i have put insulin in the pod okay now i'm waiting for it to prime so what i want to do is i want to keep the pod on top of the pdm so that the priming process is smooth Okay, because if that does not happen, like, you know, if the pod is on the side or somewhere else, it might not get primed or it might take a lot more time. So I always keep the pod on top of the PDM while it's priming. And you will hear like a ticking sound, which means that, okay, you know that you're doing something right. All right, because you'll hear a ticking sound as it gets primed. So this can take a couple of minutes. Okay, so now my PDM made a sound. Did you guys hear that? Which means that the pod is ready for infusion. So we are going to get started with that step of the process. All right. There is a blue thingy here. So I you know, take that off. Now the pod is primed and ready to be worn. So I'm going to be applying it and I will be wearing it on my side, I think. So this is the side that I'm going to pick. So I have my alcohol wipes here. You don't have to apply the wipe over a lot to swell up skin, but just on the area where you're going to be wearing the part, okay? So this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I think I'm comfortable with the spot. So just one spot. My part is beeping because it's getting impatient. Did you guys hear that? Well, so now I have applied the wipe here. Important for you to wait until the area is dry, okay, so that it sticks and it has to stick well and you need to get a good three days. Okay, so here I have a napkin to wipe it with. So now I've ensured that this is dry, okay? 
So now, without getting your fingers on this, on, just take off the flaps here. Anybody see it? Okay, so I'm, I'm just taking off the flaps. Very important not to get your finger on the sticky part. I'm holding the part on the other side. Okay, so now I put the wipe here. I decided my side, okay? Important for you to determine which side you want the needle to go on, all right? The narrow part of it is where the needle is. The flatter surface, you know, the base of the part is where the needle is not. So I am deciding, I'm going to do it from this angle so you guys can see. I am deciding that I want the needle to, I think, be the bottom. So I'm wearing my part this way, vertically, okay? Alright, so most cases I get a good three days. Uh, out of the parts that I wear, okay, nevertheless parts can come off and things like that So I try to ensure that it's as flat as possible. Can you see? I think it has been stuck properly I think it's flat It's been stuck all right. That's it. So I'm Pulling my top down and now I am actually going to be inserting the cannula Okay all I need to do is go back to the PDM where it says prepare infusion site. I've just done that. I've applied the pod on a site of my choice. Okay, so now I just hit start and I have to hit confirm. Okay, you'll get a message communicating with pod and you'll feel, did you hear that sound? You'll feel the cannula get inserted. You'll feel like a tiny little prick and then you get a message is the cannula properly inserted if you felt the cannula entering you you hit yes and then you will get a message saying your pod setup is complete and whatever basal program you have going on is active there you have it Yo, I hope you guys found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and click on the notifications bell. Click, 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 click. <laughs> so that you can get notified every time I post new content on here. I intend to make a lot more videos for the type 1 diabetes community. If you're an Omnipod user, please do subscribe. <laughs> if you like this video, please do subscribe. <laughs> and please be sure to share this video with others from the type 1 diabetes community. We can each live a life of color and vitality if we choose to do so. Check out this other video I have made also for Omnipod users taking you guys through how to retrieve excess insulin trapped in a pod that you have to discard. I have personally found that BD syringes are far more efficient in squeezing every drop of insulin from the pod to the last drop. Always remember, together we can rise.